Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 294, I believe. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from if you've joined us live. And if you're a replay warrior, welcome as well. Uh, tonight, the chat is open for those of you who are subscribers to the channel. So if you'd like to participate in the chat, you do have to have a Google account and just be a subscriber to the channel. It's free. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to tell you? We're going to be doing two projects tonight. I've got a fun fold, which I will unwrap and show you uh, when I turn my camera. And then a really cute little treat box. It's origami. I uh, created this project uh, or I shared this project on my blog, gosh, in 2017, I think that it was. So we're going to do those projects tonight. Uh, let's see, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? <laughs> Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight, my husband. Um, if you do have a question, please be sure to put a cue in front of that question. That will make it into my cue when I do our Q&A segment at the end of the live stream. That'll allow me to focus on demonstrating tonight's projects for you. And then I will stay on to answer all of your questions tonight. So don't forget, put a cue before the question. And if you're new here, let us know in the chat and my amazing community of followers will welcome you. And we'll, we'll try to remind you, um, the thought, my, my audience will also remind you to put a cue before your question as well. When you shop with me, you earn pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. All you have to do is to use my magic shopping link thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will automatically take you to the Stampin' Up! online store. With me attached is your demonstrator and it will also add my current host code for the month. Uh, if your order is going to be $150 or more, don't use the host code. You can actually remove that on the shopping cart screen because orders of $150 or more will earn Stampin' Rewards. You will also earn Pixie Perks from me on those orders as well. We have got, um, I've opened up my product shares. Uh, I think I did that last week. We've got the new mini catalog is coming up. It starts on September 6th. My customers are starting to get their catalogs in their mailbox. And the sign up for shares is available through September 4th. September 4th is the deadline. The paperpixie.com slash shares for all the details. You can download this PDF as well. But there are 15 papers included in the paper share, eight different ribbons included in the ribbon share, or you can do both, which comes with a free gift of your choice. It's an $8 value there. So uh, dates to remember, September 4th is the deadline to sign up. Payment deadline is due September 5th. And I will place one and only one order for shares on September 6th as soon as the catalog goes live to try to, do, to avoid uh, any back order or out of stock situation. Can I hand that to you really quick? Thank you. I do have some show and tell from the kiddos tonight. This is from Lily. When she came home from school, she watched Draw So Cute, Wenny. It was a, it's a YouTube channel, Draw So Cute. And this is books, a backpack, and chocolate milk. <laughs> so cute. I love, I love the little characters that Wenny from Draw So Cute uh, shares. So back to school, that's how Wenny spelled it. And then Nolan all of a sudden is on a Stitch binge, I guess. He hasn't even really watched Lilo and Stitch yet, but he got this as a um, keychain, I think, in school last year. And after school today, he just whipped up his version in Legos of Stitch, which I thought was so cute. It's the back side of the Lego bricks. Um, so that's super fun. And then he drew this and some other uh, Stitch drawings at school today. In fact, he came home, found some binder clips, and clipped his drawings to his blinds in his bedroom, which is really cute. And he found a hook to stick on his bedroom door to hang his Stitch. So... Stitch obsessed and also Lego obsessed. So Lily is our fifth grader and Nolan is our second grader. They're back to show and tell. Um, all right, so tonight's projects, I don't have any treats inside of this, but I do believe it fits a Ferrero Rocher, a handful of Hershey's Kisses. I was thinking if you did this in a fall theme, you could put a little handful or a trio of Werther's Originals. That would be a really cute 
table favor for the Thanksgiving table. I am using products that you are able to order as opposed to using the brand new mini catalog products, but we'll get to those, don't you worry. I'll have lots of inspiration for you from that catalog. This is an origami treat holder and you kind of just pull apart. I will show you how that goes together but it's a pretty good size interior. This uses two pieces of six by six. And I wanna give a shout out to several German demonstrators that were my inspiration when I shared this project on my blog in 2017. Uh, Elvira Hortner, Brigitte Keiling, Anka Rademacher, and Jana Troutman. All of those German demonstrators have shared versions of this project. And I just couldn't wait to make it because it's so cool how it goes together. And this is our fun fold card that I'm gonna tweak a little bit. I had used one of the detailed, not the detailed trio punch, but the other one that's current. And I put a little ribbon slot here, but actually the sentiment uh, or the, yeah, the circle piece works just enough to keep this closed. So we're not gonna add the ribbon slot, but it is a gift card holder. So isn't that super cute? I've seen tons of versions of this. I did tweak the measurements from a few that I had seen just so that this layout um, is equidistant. Uh, I forget what the five eighths of an inch, I think on either side, but I love the way this is. So you've got a little panel to write a note and then you've got a little pocket for a gift card. Now the cool thing about this fun fold is you can decide if you wanna have it portrait and you would just change the orientation of your sentiments or you can have it landscape like I've done here. And I've got the ribbon um, is to keep this piece from flopping around because I know you guys were going to ask me that. So we're going to jump into the fun fold first and then we'll do the 3D project. There's no template for the 3D project because it is just origami folding, which I love about that. So we are going to start with, let me make sure I've got my measurements here so I can see them. Actually, let's start with the products I'm using. So if you flip to page 14 and 15 in the annual catalog, I'm using products from the Bright and Beautiful Sweet Collection. This is fantastic for celebrations of all kinds. So I'm gonna be using the Beautiful Balloons Bundle and actually in this die set, I'm only using the star, but I love, love, love stars and I love this die cut. And the Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper is a six by six paper. Got lots of very fun, beautiful patterns and colors. I love the watercolor look of all of these patterns. A quick flip through of that. I've shared a couple of projects with this suite. I absolutely love it. And I've pulled out two ribbons here. This one is the Knight of Navy 3 eighths of an inch bordered ribbon. And then this one comes from the online exclusives. It's the gold and silver 1 eighth of an inch trim combo pack. So you get gold and silver in it. And that is only an online exclusive. And then we're using, of course, a rhinestone basic jewel. So for the fun fold card, we're gonna start with a base of Berry Burst, and this measures five and five and a half by four and a quarter. So just a quarter sheet of cardstock, that's the base. Then you wanna pick a fun pattern to lay over that that measures five and a quarter by four, and that's gonna go ahead and adhere down to the Berry Burst base, okay? We've got a piece of Berry Burst that measures four and a quarter by nine, and I'm gonna come in and score that really quickly. I'll give you some more measurements as we go. So this one we're gonna score into thirds, and I'm simply just gonna score along the long, long sides, so the nine inch side scored at three inches, and I do like to flip to the back side and score at six inches, because we are gonna fold this kind of in a Z shape, okay? So three and six along the nine inch side, and you've got three, three inch sections then. All right, so I'm gonna take the valley score line and turn it into a mountain fold. Same thing on the opposite side, valley score line, mountain fold. So you're gonna have that accordion or Z shape like so, okay? All right, so pieces and parts here. I've got two more pieces of designer series paper. This one measures two and three quarters by four. And this one measures one and three quarters by four, okay? Then I've got two more pieces of basic white. They're gonna be the same size of this larger piece, 
two and three quarters by four. I will have a project sheet for this fun fold. It will post before the end of the day tomorrow. So you'll have a picture of the card as well as all the measurements for reference. And it's a one page PDF, so you can print that. I know many of you print those and save them. You can also save them digitally to refer back to. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take one of the basic white pieces and we're gonna go ahead and do put our one and three quarter by four inch piece on there. But I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this so that the gift card will fit. I also wanna put a little finger notch. So I've just got a one inch circle punch that I'm gonna come in about halfway with the circle and I'm centering it left to right to punch and then we've got a little finger notch there. Okay, so tear and tape. We're gonna do tear and tape on the back of the designer series paper and I'm going right up to the edge because we kind of need every little bit of space that we can get. I do like to use my metal ruler here. Just gives me a nice clean tear. You can cut with scissors as well. As I tear off some DSP with that. <laughs> and then one more along the bottom. All right. So the tear and tape is in that orientation and that's just to make sure, let me pull out another gift card. We just wanna make sure that our gift card's gonna fit and you'll see that it is a tight fit for that but it will fit because it's designer series paper. So grab one of your two and three quarters by four inch pieces. I'm gonna pull the backing off of the tear and tape. And then I'm gonna take my time, but we're basically just gonna line it up right with the edge of the basic white. You don't have to do the basic white, you could just adhere this to your cardstock. But I actually wanna stamp on this. I didn't do this on the sample, but of course I came up with the idea after the sample. <laughs> so I'm just lining up those edges like so. Okay, so that's our pocket. And I'm gonna stamp a sentiment. I'm gonna be brave here because I've already put my designer series paper down. So hopefully I'll stamp it in the right spot. But I thought it'd be fun to put a little sentiment that will hide behind the gift card and this says, I think it's time for a celebration. Of course, I'm reading that upside down or backwards, I should say. I'm gonna bring that pretty close to the designer series paper. Let's hope that it works. I got a little extra ink there. There we go. Okay. All right, so we are going to start to layer our pieces together. I like to start with the base first. So let me get my liquid glue, a couple extra bottles hanging around. I'm not sure which one is the better one to use. Uh. All right, so I love this diagonal stripe pattern from the Bold and Beautiful DSP. We'll go ahead and adhere that to the base. Again, four and a quarter by five and a half cardstock. Then four by five and a quarter designer series paper for our base. Put that off to the side. And then the way that this is gonna work is it's gonna open, well, we're doing this landscape, but we're gonna have it go this way. So just keep that in mind as you adhere your panels. So we're gonna start with this piece that was two and three quarters by four, that's gonna go on our front panel. Like so. And then you can decide if you want your gift card to be in the middle panel or the last panel. I kind of like it in the middle Like 
that. And then we've got our other two and three quarter by four inch basic white. You're welcome to stamp on that if you want to. I like leaving the extra space for a note. I'm going to glue this down first and then we'll put our gift card in. So we only want to put adhesive on the back side of this panel. We're going to glue this down like so. I do like to do a little bit of extra adhesive for this. So around the edge and then I do a little zigzag in the middle. Like so. I panicked for a second. I thought I put that down the wrong way, but we're good. There we go. And then we'll take our little gift card. The first time you put it in your pocket, it's going to be a little bit of a tight fit, but you'll see that the DSP gives a little bit. So that's going to just perfectly cover that sentiment, which will be a really nice surprise when the recipient takes the gift card out. I love little surprise sentiments like so. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and embellish the front. And I have already done this ahead of time to save some time, but I heat embossed on Berry Burst in white, with white embossing powder. And then I wanted to show you, I did a third one just to show you how I lined up the die. Because it's not an open die, the star. So there's a couple ways you could do this. You could set up yourself a template. I actually just found it was easy to kind of lay it over and I kind of slid up and down, just making sure I was in the center there. And then I took some post-it tape, got a couple extra pieces here, and then just held it into place. And for the most part, all of them that I cut out came out well. Otherwise you could use a template on a stamp positioning tool or something to get it in the right spot. So there's that. I did two of those because we're gonna use the other one on the three dimensional project. So I also punched out using our one and three quarter inch circle punch from Lemon Lime Twist, a circle there that will layer that over. It's just a slightly different color from, well, I guess I did, uh, Misty Moonlight for the star on the sample. I'll show you both when we're done here. And that's just gonna center really nicely in that one and three quarter inch circle. I love that berry burst against the lemon lime twist. It's a cool color combination there. All right, so the ribbon. That's that Knight of Navy, three eighths of an inch bordered ribbon. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a bow around this. I found my reverse tweezers. They were in the living room from the last time we did product shares. How can I find them? All right, so I love tying the bow right off of the spool. Let's do this way. I think that's too long of a tail there. Let's try that, okay. Ribbon's just one way to hold the, the fun fold down. You could do a piece of Velcro if you wanted to. I'll use my reverse tweezers as a third hand. And then I have to remember that I'm the gift cards are in the funnels. I usually go searching for gift cards with all the gift card projects I make. Ugh, I forget about them. There's a library card in one of them too. <laughs> Which works for a good substitute. As long as you don't give it to somebody. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and trim off the ends. Oh, my scissors are gunky. I need to clean them. If I don't pin it now, I will lose the pin. <laughs> All right, so with the sentiment, I'm gonna make sure that that ribbon goes in the center. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and put this kind of a little bit cattywampus, a little bit at an angle, but I'm gonna just take two Stampin' Dimensionals. And the trick that I like to use is just put them on either side of the ribbon as opposed to trying to eyeball and figure out where you need to put it on the back of your sentiment. So you don't wanna put the dimensionals on the ribbon because you want the recipient to be able to get the ribbon off the card. And we'll just a little bit cattywampus there. And grab a rhinestone basic jewel. for a little bit of added bling. So there we have our fun fold. Let me bring it up next to the other one, which doesn't have the bow on it, but I'll just show you the difference in color. I think I like the berry burst one. Um, so yeah, ignore the, you can absolutely do the ribbon slot, but I found that the ribbon slot plus the sentiment on dimensionals is a little bit of overkill, so it's totally not needed, the ribbon slot, but if you're curious where that came from, it's the very best trio punch. It has a ribbon slot punch on there. See that? Okay. So there we go. That is our fun fold gift card holder. Super fun. And you, again, this will be great for the holidays using Christmas papers. Um, I love it for birthdays, graduation. It's a great way to give money. It doesn't have to be a gift card. It could be a check or cash as well that will fit in the pocket. So you've got options. And why don't we go ahead and jump into our really easy sour origami sour cream container. I'm going to switch up the papers a little bit. I am actually choosing two of the same paper. All you need are two pieces of six by six. So this works really well with six by six or 12 by 12 designer series paper. You're going to basically do, we're going to do opposites, but I'm going to start with the one that I want to be the pattern on the outside, or I should say the majority of the sour cream container. So this one I wanted to be the stars and this one I want to be the stripes. So there's no measuring for this other than if you had to cut down 12 by 12, you just cut it down to six by six. We're just gonna fold and burnish. It's really, really easy. Both pieces are gonna fold and burnish almost the same way with one minor difference. And that's how we'll get these to nest together. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this corner to corner diagonally. Now again, I want the stripes to be on the outside. So I'm gonna flip it over and then fold corner to corner. Now, if you have a hard time getting those corners lined up, a quick trip, quick trip, a quick trick for you or tip. <laughs> I said to Brian, I'm like, am I gonna, what did I say? Am I gonna mess up my words tonight? So you can use a paper trimmer or the Simply Scored, and you're using that little corner there to line up the points. You can just kind of get it started. That's all you really need to do. And then you can fold and burnish the rest of the way. So I do like to burnish each time. Now this center fold is with origami is really gonna help us line up the rest of the fold. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it, and you'll see we've got that center seam. I'm then gonna take this edge and line it right up to that center seam. So kind of doing a kite shape here. And take your time, I'm kind of like putting my finger in here. The hardest part is getting this bottom part of the edge to line up. The better you line it up, the better your end result here. So there we go. And then I'll come in and burnish. And we're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. I found it was easy to put it in sort of this kite formation. And then I'm kind of putting my thumbnail there just to get that kind of curving over my thumb. But I'm gonna line up this edge with this edge and it just makes it a lot easier to get those lined up. Like so. And burnish. Okay, so you're tracking. We did corner to corner, open that up. And then we're doing edge to middle, edge to middle. So now we look like a kite. I'm gonna turn it this way and we're gonna fold this edge right there where that meets the top piece of the paper. And I do like to make sure that this point is lining up with that center seam and burnish, okay? 
And we're going to get two chances at this, so you'll be able to watch it. And, and when you watch on replay, you can just pause and rewind. And I'm going to flip it back around this way, and I'm going to take this point to this edge. But I want to make sure that the point is lining up with this center seam of paper. And then burnish. Okay, now we're getting to a point where we're folding quite a few layers of paper over itself. So you just wanna take your time here. So it kind of looks like a diaper fold a little bit. I'm gonna turn it to the side and we're now gonna fold this right along that edge there, like so. Now what I like to do for this, I've made quite a few of these. I like to just kind of fold that with my hands and I'll come in and burnish in a second. We're gonna repeat the same thing here. And the paper really is going to work with you when you push it up this way. It's going to go right up to that edge. Okay. So now these two pieces, I'm, I kind of opened this point so that I'm not quite folding over a whole bunch of layers so that I can then come in and burnish. So that's all we do for one of them. Now, technically, this is going to be the shape that it's going to go into. So you can kind of see it starting to form. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one to the side. We're gonna repeat the same thing, only this time we're gonna do it on the opposite side. So I want this to be on the outside. I actually do like the darker corner here. So we're gonna kind of pay attention to how we're folding to make sure we get this corner to be what appears here versus this corner. Either one will look great, but I do like the kind of the contrast of that against the stripes. Okay, so now this is the side we want to be on the outside for this piece. So I'm gonna flip it over and again, corner to corner. And if you need to do the trick with the paper trimmer, go for it, or the Simply Scored. And now I'm trying to remember here, I think, yep. Yeah. So I want the dark to be on this edge, or I should say on the right side, as I do the same thing. Bringing this edge up to that center fold. Sometimes it helps to kind of fold this up so you can get an idea, especially with a striped pattern like this. It's a little bit difficult to see where that uh, fold line is. Okay, and then same thing, kind of coercing the paper there, lining up that edge. Like so, burnish. Turning it this way, folding this up again, lining up that point on that seam. And this is the part where it changes ever so slightly. So instead of having this flap on the side of the paper when we fold the next time, I'm going to flip it. That's the only difference, okay? So we're gonna flip it this way. And I'm gonna turn it to where the point is facing me. And now we're gonna fold it the same way, right along that center seam, gonna bring that point up. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it kind of a quarter of a turn and fold this again. So I will repeat this in just a moment. I'll repeat the steps again. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and burnish. Okay, so the only difference between these two, I think you'll see, we've got the flap is on the inside and the flap is on the outside. But otherwise it's folded exactly the same. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this piece open again. So the first thing we did, remember, we folded corner to corner. Then we folded the edge to the center seam on both sides. We brought this piece down or up, depending on which way you turned it. The only difference with the next step is on this piece, we flipped it over before we did it, okay? But on this one, we took this point and folded it up and folded this over and this over. So now we've got these two pieces that look almost identical with the exception of the paper flap and it's time to, to nest these together. And I love this because there's no cutting, there's no adhesive, they just work together, uh, which is super, super fun. So I'm gonna take the point of this one, the one that doesn't have the flap on the inside, and we're gonna tuck that point underneath the flap of the other one. 
okay? So I've tucked it under there. Then on the back, we're gonna tuck this point underneath this flap, like so, okay? So underneath the inside flap, underneath the outside flap. And the last thing we're gonna do is these are little flaps that we're gonna tuck these points into. And this is one you just wanna kind of take your time because we are kind of having to tell the paper who's boss here, but we're gonna tuck those corners in. So see how it's gonna fight us just a little bit. Just kind of, I'm kind of, this is kind of curling just a little bit to get it tucked under. Now at this point, you'd probably wanna put your treat on the inside, although we're not using any adhesive, so you can open it at any time. And then I'm just getting those two to line up. And magically, that is holding itself together without any adhesive. And it's quite a sturdy little sour cream pouch. So again, that's origami. And I love the way that looks, especially if you pick two different pattern designer series papers that are in contrast with each other. Really, really cute. Actually, I'm gonna show you a couple that I've been working on for swaps. <laughs> Using that brand new garden walk paper, but you can have so much fun picking different patterns from the in for the inside and the outside. I told you guys this is my favorite designer series paper in the new mini catalog. So I don't know, I just love the stripes and the florals together. So super, super fun. Before that falls over. But that is how easy that goes together. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. I'm gonna put it together one more time for you. So we've got the this flap, or I should say this point fits under this flap. And you'll be able to tell all these triangles are the same size, so it just fits together. A little bit of geometry there. I've got my little my little math thing that's going on. <laughs> Wait till you see it. It'll come on your screen in a second. <laughs> okay, so we've tucked that under that flap and we tuck that under this flap. Then these points are gonna tuck underneath these flaps. You like that? Mathematics? You haven't seen it yet? tuck and tuck and then it gets easier to go back together after you've already kind of trained the paper there so there we go now the recipient could pinch this open if they wanted to but really all they need to do is just pull on either end okay so let's do a little bit of decorating I've got another one of these I heat embossed in white on berry burst and then die cut with the dies and I'm gonna bring in that trim which trim was it again the gold and silver trim combo pack. And I was gonna show you how I did my little faux bow on this. It was kind of fun to put together. All right, so I'm gonna use glue dots for this. And you can do your faux bow any way you want to, but this is kind of a fun way to do the loop-de-loops. I'm just going to take a mini glue dot and put that right in the center, the back of the star. And I'm gonna kind of dry fit this Kind of get an idea of the length that I want. That's probably good. It's just e This is a little bit easier to work with off the spool. So I'm just gonna take, well, I wanna make sure my sentiment's going in the right way. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what we're doing here. And I'm just gonna put the center of that ribbon right there, stuck it right to the glue dot. Okay, I'm gonna take one more, well, we're gonna do two, three glue dots total. So another glue dot right in the center of that ribbon. Okay, and I'm gonna do a loop, but I'm kind of twisting it as I do that. Okay, so as opposed to just doing a regular loop, I'm twisting. That just kind of gets that ribbon to pop up a little bit to the top. A little bit like a support ribbon, if you think of how those go together. And same thing, a little bit of a twist loop there. It's gonna look like a pretzel from the back. I am just trying to make sure, oops, I forgot the third glue dot, that would help. Glue dots are really great for doing this with ribbon. So again, kind of a twist. Get my loops to be about the same size. And then when I flip that over, you have that really cool bow behind it, okay? 
All right, so then I'm just gonna take two mini glue dots. I'm gonna put those above and below our ribbon because it's in a good, it's gonna stay put with those glue dots. Get the backings off. And actually I'm going to trim, where do I put my paper snips? I'm gonna trim the tails off just a little bit. They're a little long for me. We'll pop that up on the front here. I'm just lining up the point of that star with our folded seam there. And it's as easy as that to make our little origami sour cream container. So cute. So there's the uh, Misty Moonlight Berry Burst version. Let me bring back our fun fold cards as well. Two slightly different versions there, but so much fun. So again, the project sheets for each of these projects, there'll be a project sheet for each, will be listed in the dis video description by the end of the day tomorrow. So stop back to check out the replay and get grab those links to the project sheets. And why don't we go ahead and jump into Q&A tonight. All right, let me get those teed up here. Uh, Cynthia, I've done a napkin fold box actually uh, that's been many many years ago but if you go to my website thepaperpixie.com and you click the little magnifying glass uh, you can click on napkin fold um, and you'll see I'm pretty sure it was a box um, I can't remember I think I might have also done a napkin fold card but yeah it was many many years ago that I did that let's see what do I put on my hands before I start? Thank you for sharing your wonderful ideas. I use, not sponsored, <laughs> um, Everyone Nourishing Lotion. I love this stuff. Um, I used to work at a place in Sugar Falls, Ohio called the Village Herb Shop for many, many years through uh, middle school and high school and summers in college. And we carried the EO brand, which I think is the same I think it's now everyone, but I love this lotion. Um, this one's unscented, but it works really well because it doesn't make my hands greasy and um, it's got good ingredients. So yeah, great question. I know I've gotten a few of those questions before, so thanks for asking. Does Stampin' Up! do tours of their facility? Just curious as I will be in the area. They do, Elaine. Uh, I would reach out to Stampin' Up! to see if they're offering tours um, while you're in the area, they'll be able to let you know, but they do offer tours, so be sure to give them a call. 800 Stamp Up is their phone number. Have I ever done a project with the lint sticks? Jill, I don't think I have. Brian's shaking his head. He's, he's my second brain. Um, no, I have not yet, but I will look for those. Now, are those the bigger ones? I think that might be what. I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about, Jill, and I have had them in my stash. Oh, yeah. Um, I got one in a swap and I was going to make a project for it and I ate it. <laughs> so, so I will add that to my list of upcoming projects for sure. Thanks, Jill. I know you stand while you're doing your videos, but do you stand or sit while you're doing crafting on your own? Great question, Barbara. I mostly stand to design. Uh, and if I'm making multiples, I will usually do certain steps of the process from the comfort of my couch with a great TV show on or something like that. So um, if I'm doing multiples, I'll probably sit down and glue the layers. I won't do stamping um, sitting down. I won't tie ribbon sitting down. I do color sitting down. So if I'm using my Stampin' Blends, it's easier to color sitting down. But for the most part, I stand up. Great question. Oh, I got that answered. And hopefully you were here for that. Everyone, uh, nourishing lotion. When will the scoring blades be available? You know what, Loretta, let me see if I can, can I check that? Let's see, hold on. I've got my computer up here just in case. All right, scoring blades, let's see. Give me one moment here. Oh, of course it wants me to log into my password, let's see. 
one of these days I will remember to have this pulled up. I usually have Brian have it pulled up, but he hasn't, I haven't gotten him set up on the switch <laughs> when we switched the new Stampin' Up! website. Okay, let's try that. We'll see what it says for the scoring blades. I'm looking in the, on the demonstrator site for those of you that are wondering. Um, inventory status. Let's see if it's even listed here. The week of September 4th, so that's coming up in a couple of weeks, Loretta. So that's when it's S the Scoring Blades multi-pack, which is available as an online exclusive, is estimated to be back in stock the week of September 4th. Let's see. A few months ago, you went to Norway and brought back some samples from demonstrators. One of them was a notepad with the Country DSP. Was wondering if you would be making one anytime soon. So that was actually from a swap from... The 35 for 35 event Aiken. in Aiken. Yes, thank you. Um, it's on my list. I haven't had a chance to order the notepads yet and design my own version of it, but it's coming soon. I just can't tell you when. So Sue, all I use are alcohol wipes. Let me grab my little box. I just use alcohol prep pads and I buy the little 100 pack off of Amazon. I think this might be on my favorites page, the paperpixie.com slash favorites, but I just do single use, the little um, single pads. Um, you could you could absolutely use a bottle of it as well on like a paper towel um, or microfiber cloth. And I just find that that works really well to get the adhesive gunk off the blades. So, and cleans the, it cleans the scissors. And I honestly, I've been a demonstrator for 13 years and I don't think I have replaced I've never replaced my, I have quite a few paper snips, but there's one pair that I've been using from like the beginning. And all I have to do is clean it off and they still are very, very sharp. So quick and easy. I know people have used like Goo Gone and things like that. I find the alcohol pads work the, work the best. Could you add a ribbon and use these little containers as tree ornaments? You sure could, Linda. Now one of the challenges you might run into is if you're punching through like the top of this, it's a lot of layers of paper. So you're probably gonna need a little bit of hand muscle to punch through that, to punch through that. Otherwise you could um, adhere some ribbon if you're not able to punch through the layers, but it's quite a few layers that overlap. Okay, that's the only problem you might run into punching a hole, but that'd be really cute. Can you do one color of the container in cardstock or is it too heavy? I think, Jennifer, the cardstock's gonna be too heavy. Um, you're gonna find that the cardstock's probably gonna break down. It's gonna be really hard, especially those last two folds, to do that with cardstock. So, um, especially with origami, you wanna try to tick, stick to the, the thinner weight paper. And even our designer series paper is a little thick for origami. Uh, I think you might've noticed just, there's just a little bit of tearing because of how many layers it's folding over. Um, so yeah, cardstock I think would be too thick. Can I show what it looks like pinched open? Let's see if I can get one of these to pinch open. Yes, okay, let me come back to this. So there we go. And it'll go back to, as long as you don't pinch it too hard, so pinch it just enough to get your treat in there, it'll close back and your treats should stay, oh, I don't have any treats in here, but I'm pretending like I'm shaking <laughs> treats out, phantom treats. Um, but yeah, it pinches open pretty easily, like so, okay? It's got a good memory. All right. That would be nine by four and a quarter. Nine by four and a quarter, Tara. I was combining quarter and Tara for some reason. So nine by four and a quarter. And you'll score that at three and six along the nine inch side. I don't have any plans for that, Linda, but I will keep it in mind. Um, if you guys remember, the last special event was 200 when my dad was here. So I'll try to think of doing something for 300. Let's see. So Sue, right now my blog is, I have a major backlog <laughs> to get to the blog. I think the last project I posted was the spring Easter basket from uh, early April. So any projects from that project, you'll find the project sheets for now are in the video description. I do have plans to get all of those up on the blog 
Um, for those of you that are blog subscribers, there's going to be an influx of um, blog posts coming. I'll try to keep it to one per day till I can get caught up. Um, but uh, if there's anything you can't find on the blog, or if it's a uh, project since that East spring Easter basket, which is the last project on the blog, you'll find the project sheets in the video description on YouTube. How many years did it take to establish Stampin' Up! as your full-time gig? Um, eight? Oh, no. 11 to 12 years. Um, but the first five years, I was just uh, a hobbyist enjoying uh, enjoying it as a hobby. I wasn't teaching any classes or having any workshops or anything like that. So yeah, probably about 11 to 12 years, I think. All right, we have reached the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's projects or tonight's q and I'd love for you to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That will be Wednesday, August 23rd, if I'm doing the math right. Math is hard. Um, <laughs> so I'll be live again next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time with another two projects for you. It's probably a 3D project and a fun fold that kind of seems to be my jam these days. I love them both so much. Um, don't forget that my product shares are open for sign up, thepaperpixie.com slash shares. And when you shop with me, use my magic link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will automatically add my current host, host code to your order so you can earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. We will see you next Wednesday. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper Pixie. Take good care. See you next week. Bye.